Can you tell everyone to stop being poor? Stop being poor? <laughs> <laughs> this man is the most... Anyone who needs any karma tips, Charge has got you not, with one little. <laughs> it's not the it's not the edifices as how I said it in that video though. You know, I was like yeah. way more forward than how I said it. In, so. We've got like we've captured that for the rest of eternity. We've got it as an audio file that will outlive <laughs> the two of us. So people will never miss that golden nugget. I mean, not the not right. the greatest of quotes to go down with, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, I wanted to say hello, first of all, to everyone. Thank you for being here. Uh, today we have uh, we have a delightful new content creator, the latest to join the scene of making any sort of content in English. There's a few of us. We could Fordofus. do with more. No? For Dolphus, yeah. And more, as we will discover later on. <laughs> but before we get started, there is a special event that will be happening in the end of August. From the 31st of August to the 1st of September, so over a period of three days, Ankama is celebrating 20 years of Dofus and they're holding a convention. Now, I could sit here and tell you uh, something about it, but I would go on purely off what I've seen online because I have zero experience with this kind of stuff. Never attended one. And for the first time in life, I'm in a position where I can at least attempt to travel go there, document it, enjoy it, and it falls perfectly in line with me going full-time to make content for the office for at least a few months. Whew, I feel like I've covered everything there. Um, yes, without further ado, I think we have a special guest today that we need to make blush, know a lot yeah, about. Yeah, uh, welcome this... to, the, to the podcast, Melt. It's good <laughs> yeah. to have you here. You'll hopefully learn all about you this podcast and maybe... The new host. Maybe show your channel, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> I'll just do one quick. They're gonna troll us. They're gonna just say Mike muted, you know? You know this, right? You've been streaming <laughs> for, for the long usual. enough. <laughs> the usual, the usual. Right. Oh, on. they're gonna reply with like uh, Cole S, like he's crying. So. <laughs> You're already on the memes. I love your energy. You're on fire. <laughs> I'm having to have a coffee because I just woke up from a nap. Surprise, surprise. Right on. Thank you everyone for being here. And welcome to yet another episode of In Conversation With. I'm your host, Single Malt, and today we have the fantastic Tarja, who is the latest content creator to join the scene, making Dofus English content for us to enjoy. She has, and I'm not kidding here when I say, pushed the bar high up after having joined for a week or two. She has found the International Pub, joined the group, and her contributions have put fire under my personal behind. I don't know about anybody else, but she has brought a new energy to the space, uh, knowledge of other type of content creation that she has done in the past. And all of this is contributing to me wanting to give her back something with the very little that I have to offer by bringing her in, giving her some recognition and more especially, more importantly, getting to know her. Because when you look at the video of a content creator, you don't necessarily know anything about their background, their situations, circumstances, who they are. And shall we start with the obvious, Tarja? Would you like to introduce yourself for us in as many words as you fancied? In as many words as I fancy. I'm 27. <laughs> uh, I'm a student uh, and, I, and I'm single. Hello. Hi. Oh, you slipped that last detail in. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, jo jokes aside though. Um, I'm 27, I make a content creation for Dofus, uh, but I mainly actually focus on other games too. Uh, I'm focused on Stellaris uh, as of recently most, uh, these days, but I started off playing League of Legends back in the day. Um, I used to be... <laughs> League of Legends was the, the game that caught my attention for content creation. So I used to watch a lot of League streamers back when I was like 18, 19. So I, and I thought it was pretty cool. And I was like, this game looks easy. I can probably be good at this game and do something too. And as I did. Remarkable. And then I started making content for League. Yeah. Let's go. I, I figured out that um, if you leave your, your mental health aside, you can actually become really good at League of Legends by spending <laughs> only 16 hours a day playing the game. So I did that and I played a champion called Singed. Which is this one bald guy that farts and hurts enemies behind him when he does. <laughs> and I reached a master tier, which is like 0.02% uh, in League of Legends. So, wow. so super high. And I made a, I made a guide uh, for this character. 
which back in the day was a pretty big deal since there were not that many people that played it in Master Tier in Season 7. And it became rather popular, it had like uh, almost a million views. And people uh, watched my stream because of it. Not because they, they liked my personality or anything, but because they wanted to copy my strategy and do it in their games too. So I would basically have people watching my my guide. My stream would be embedded in the actual channel too. Sorry, in the in the guide itself. And I would gain quote unquote popularity from that. But um League of Legends is a dying game, so I stopped uh, playing and I started actually uh studying in, in college afterwards and I stopped doing content creation until relatively recently where I took up Stellaris again and I decided to hey why not dip my toes in this again? I had a lot of fun before, I might as well have more fun now for the different game that I that I enjoy plenty. Remarkable. And just yeah. to put a word in very quickly in there while you're talking about League of Legends, I managed to find the post that you've made that has been viewed by over 800,000 people. First of all, did you expect that putting words together and the strategy and everything like that in one post in a website would garner that much attention? I honestly didn't, um, but I, I don't even know why I did it back in the day. Like I did it mostly because I felt like there, there was like these other two content creators that I really looked forward to, uh, or up to um, that played Singed. One of them was Drew Droid, um, which uh, I'll shoot you the link. But he's like this super chill dude that played Singed and he would get banned for using a strategy that's usually um, like not available uh, or like not really the best. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll shoot you the link. You can look him up. Let's see. We can do that later. Uh, well, we can return yeah, to that. Yeah, but basically, some, uh, visual guide but yeah, basically, he see. did he did like a lot of strategies that are different for the specific champion, and that was like in previous seasons. And I played in season seven, meaning that there wasn't really that much up to date information on how to play the champion properly I see. in these high ranks. And I gathered information from like a Korean player that was kind of obscure and not like not that a lot of people knew about, who was challenging <laughs> playing this specific champion. So I copied him. All right, I copied the strategy. <laughs> I copied some of the strategies that this other American player had for Singed. And I also mm -hmm. copied some of the other strategies that this other um, European player had for Singed. I mashed them all together and I created my own playstyle. Let's and go. this is where I, I made the guide uh, mentioning all three of them. And also mentioning different like pe uh, peculiarities between the different um, servers and how different people play. I didn't expect it to get that popular, but I just I have a kind of a thing for documenting things in a very detailed manner and making sure it looks kind of nice and we will get you, into that it's origin where it comes from and what you're doing with it in more recent times for sure because it is one of the most defining features about yourself but before we get ahead of ourselves i wanted to ask you um can, what can you tell us about the background i have chosen for today's conversation and you must know oh. that every <laughs> conversation i have with every creator i use the background as a sort of meme or reference something interesting about them that they should tell us about what can you say about this so this is madrid this is the the city that i live in well i can i live in the outskirts not in the actual city but basically the thing with this image it's the the schweppes tower or the torre schweppes as we like to call it and it's kind of <laughs> like a meme landmark mm -hmm. because it's supposed to be during the day it's this super ugly tower that has mm -hmm. this like um image in the front as an advertisement for yeah. schweppes uh -huh. And people meme on it because it's like the they call it the quote unquote prettiest landmark in Madrid, you know. <laughs> oh, that's hard. And there's like there's like a lot of memes uh, Madrid related to. That's one of them. Mm. The other one is like the the beaches in Madrid are the most beautiful. There's of yeah. course no beaches in Madrid because we're not, not seaside. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then <laughs> another thing too is um, the water in Madrid is the best. This is actually not a meme. People in Madrid, we actually we feel very proud of our water, that it's so much better than the water in the rest of Spain. So, and there's memes about like people in Madrid <laughs> leaving Spain. Sorry, not leaving Spain, but leaving Madrid, going to a different part of Spain, and their water just not being being like uh, wow. drinkable. I was I gonna can say edible. See where edible your not sense of humor is coming from. If you had this many memes <laughs> about just the city where you were born and, and live in, that is incredible, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I suppose the first question I'd like to start with, with anyone that isn't French that I have a conversation with, which is pretty much most of uh, the people I have conversations with, given that I tend to live within the international community, which is, 
How the hell did you find out about the game? When did That's you find such out? A, how? It's so weird to think about. But mm. when I was younger, um, so okay, I'm gonna go back into or I'm gonna say a lot. But trust me, I'll get to the answer. Don't worry about it. Very well. So I started. Tell us the story. I started playing. <laughs> <laughs> I started playing uh, piano when I was three, because my parents uh, really wanted me to play music since I was younger. Because um, it's just kind of like a big deal for them into my education and stuff. And when I was like eight or nine, they uh, they urged me to like apply for like a, the music school that you can go to. And what you can do in the music school, you can actually uh, take a music course to get an associate's degree by the time you are 18, if you apply when you're very young. So Ooh. I did the tests and I failed. So <laughs> I wasn't able to enter with the piano, but I picked up a different instrument and entered with cello instead. The reason mm -hmm. I failed was because I was dyslexic when I was younger, mm -hmm. very sad, but it's okay. Um, so I, I sniffed a lot of copium. I, I was hopeful again, <laughs> and I learned cello, and I got into music school, and I started learning, and I met some mm -hmm. interesting people there. I got, I went to music class. I made one friend, mm -hmm. which we would every single time we would be on break, we would go to the PC in the music school, which was this really old PC that only had like flash games on it, oh. and we would play like um, the flash games on it from like. Uh, minigames.com or whatever the website was mini back clip. in the day or uh, it was it, it was the spanish one it was mini ah, okay. yeah mm. so we would go there um, also el bruto punto is was another uh website we would go to but that aside um he once told me that hey there's this game that i found out and i played in my own at my own place and i think you can run it on <laughs> your pc too it's pretty fun it's called dofus and uh -huh. I was like, oh, wait, it's a multiplayer fast game. You can actually play this with other people and it runs in PCs that are garbage. And he's wow. like, yeah, yeah, you should try it out. And uh, that's how I, I found out about it. And I think for the next like two, three months, uh, because I wasn't able to play much on my computer because I didn't really have a computer. I had like the family computer, you know? Yeah. Um, and I was, I, was super, I was super young, yeah. <laughs> and uh, also, let me emphasize, I didn't play Dofus like retro or normal. I played Dofus yeah. 2. Like oh. when I started playing, it was Dofus 2. I never actually started playing in, in Dofus 1. So this so was Dofus 2. you've never experienced retro. That's not your earliest well, memory of it. I don't think so. The reason why mm. I say I don't think so is because the only thing I did in Dofus back in the day was I, w I was in Incarnum with my friend. We would be in Skype, boys chatting. Ooh. And um, we would be in the in the cemetery in Incarnum, yes. killing chafers. Yes. And whenever <laughs> it was like super camped, you know, it's like so many people there. And whenever like a huge mob of chafers appear, uh, appear, we would like, if we managed to get it, we'd be like, oh, the lottery, the lottery. We'd be like screaming out, no, <laughs> we still hyped about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we were like little kids back then. They would get us so excited. <laughs> but... I remember my first memory back then was like getting a, a gobble cape. When I was like level 30, I was like, wow, yeah. I can actually have equipment in this game. This is so oh, cool. Oh, oh. I... <laughs> <laughs> but that's how I that's how I learned about Dofus randomly uh, by with a music school friend back in the day, who, by the way, I don't even talk to nowadays. I, I don't mm. know what happened to them. I don't know why we stopped talking. I, I have no idea. But yeah, life happens. But yes, life happens. Your yeah. story makes me feel so much older than I actually am. Because every time I think <laughs> about my earliest memories of playing Dofus, it feels like I'm watching black and white television. And you come in and tell us, yeah, it was 2.0 and it was already, as, as it is mostly now, same sort of graphics and looks. So yes. No, it was, it was not how it was nowadays. It was definitely a lot more rudimentary. It has improved mm. so much. Yes. And I think people don't right. realize how much Dofus has improved since the Addis Dofus 2, since it was actually yeah. born. There's so many little changes that have been done gradually throughout the different years that when you play Dofus, you don't realize the amount of changes that have actually been done. But compounded, going back in the day, you can see the huge difference. Yes. It's yeah. very yeah. stark. Yeah, yeah. Mm. that reminds me of... Um, have you watched the uh, uh, the Japan Expo presentation that uh, Ribeck and Papino have done? <clears throat> I've no, I, I haven't. I've covered it in English because I found it remarkably interesting. It is the, from the last conversation with Istos, that's where he got to ask them questions. Uh, it, I found it oh. remarkable because how often do you see the entire team reflect back on 20 years of changes in content? When you do any exercise of that nature, you realize 
how far they have come. Uh, as in, you think of Eliotrop as a class that has always existed, but no, when you look at the presentation, it has happened at a certain date, whereas previously it didn't exist. And when you see all the various big milestones they have gone through, you think to yourself, the game has morphed so much in the last at least 10 years, for sure. It's grown too much. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't even remember Eliotrop being a class back then. Time. I think the first Elios. class that was kind of kind of new was the panda. Panda was even was a subscription based class. Really? Back then. Yes, you don't yeah. remember this? No, I don't remember it, but I tend to ascribe that idea to 1.29. I just push it as far as far back, and now you're sort of no, no. There was, this was a this was a Dofus two uh, thing. You had to yeah. subscribe to be able to play panda. It was, <laughs> oh, it, was uh, it was so weird. We should do the same thing with. Um, with pandas again nowadays to reduce their population. <laughs> <laughs> well, not at my server because everyone has to be subscribed to my server. Yes, you do play in Draconeros and we will get to that in a second. <laughs> but before that, I wanted to ask you about... Uh, so you've told us a bit about your background, the fact that you're Spanish, you've taken up music as a first instance and music has led to the discovery of game. But I highly doubt that that was your only foray into the world of gaming, given your success with League of Legends. Can you tell us again about the Young Targ, what other games appealed <laughs> to you and why so, exactly that type of games? My my dad actually uh, works in, not in the gaming industry, but more so Ooh. in like the, the quote unquote, like, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know how to call it, but in the Gamba industry, kind of. Oh yeah, it's and called he, the gaming industry, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So he made uh, slot machines. Okay. As his, as his profession. Like he had like actual um, like what is it called? Uh, fabricas, I guess, factories. Okay, where he uh, employed yeah, yeah. people, and they made slot machines. He had one in the UK, one in Madrid, and he made uh, I think he made like this really cool game for the slot machine for the Pink Panther, and that really caught my attention. And uh, when I was younger, he also got me into playing games. He got me like a Game Boy. Uh, wow. That was my first ever console. Was the Game Boy, um, the normal Game Boy, the one where you could put the batteries in it, you know. Oh wow! And yeah, I don't know. What was your first console for you? Like, uh, do you remember this? Or? My first ever console, and, and here I'm gonna show off my age. <laughs> show off my age. <laughs> Wait, was it was it a was it a Commodore sixty four? Uh, it's not the Commodore. It's the Atari sixty four. Is it the same thing? Okay, okay. No, it's not the same thing. The Commodore sixty four uh, was, was the uh, computer, Atari two six zero zero, the two thousand six hundred which was like a big keyboard with no keys and you had um, joysticks that came with it so to to affect movement uh multi-directional uh what would you call it i don't even yeah. know all of that stuff was uh in french it was it was me. a it was a joystick yeah i i mean my my dad uh got me also for the tv he got me this was like when the catheter uh, right, tube TVs were like a thing, you know, the big chunky TVs. Yes. He got me like a. <laughs> he got me like one of these things for the TV. You could play with a joystick, and it would have Space yeah. Invaders, uh, Pac-Man, oh, wow. wow. and um, I don't know what else. But it had those those two games, and yeah, I would play I those two games. The cartridges there. as well. <laughs> You had to blow in them and put them back <laughs> on so they work. And my earliest game, I think I remember, not on PC, was a. Uh, a green frog that was trying to cross the road and there were cars coming in all directions. <laughs> oh yeah, I remember that one, yeah. I, I remember that one, I played that one too, yeah. Yeah. For that was not reason, my favorite, my favorite one For some reason was, I still um, feel like you're so much younger than me, whereas the difference in age is not that that important. <laughs> I, I don't think it is, I think, I think technically we're both, okay. I need to get this off my chest. I'm tired oh, of being me. called a, I'm tired of getting being called a zoomer <laughs> by you people. I'm not a zoomer. I'm 27. I'm technically in the boundary between a millennial and a zoomer. I don't know what the hell that's called, but I'm not a zoomer. Right? <laughs> there you go. I, You've been told I was off not born Pluto. with a smartphone <laughs> in my hands. <laughs> yeah, there you go. You've been told off. So you have a big history with gaming in general, in that it was in the family. It was the bread and butter of dad's income. Then it only made sense that he had a positive attitude towards that and introduced you to the Game Boy consoles and things like that. Yeah. And then. But it would always be very it. regulated, though. It would always be yeah. like max uh, tops 15 minutes a day. Wow, yeah. that is okay. Yeah, so tops, I would be 15 minutes a day. 
I would always be playing with my mother right next to me. And um, I remember this one time when I was younger, I was playing the, I think it was the GameCube. I was like a bit more older than I was like eight or nine, I think. And I was playing the GameCube in the summer place that my parents were in. Oh. And they told me not to play the GameCube while they were out. And I did. And I got told off so badly. I still remember it up to this day. Because um, I never remember them telling me off that bad for playing a console before. And it kind of made me super scared of them catching me playing the console again whenever they told me not to. So What would you attribute that extra caution to? Because I know your dad works in the, in the industry. Is there anything behind that? Does he know something that pertains to the world of gaming that he was sort of trying to protect you from or what would you have you thought about that i guess that he um i guess that he and well especially my mother deemed like video used to be very addicting and mm -hmm. uh like a very big issue if you play them too much so fantastic that's probably why mm, awesome that helps us neatly segue into the next part, which is the Dofus game itself. You've discovered it, you've started playing it. Uh, what can you tell us about the earliest? What was your first character that you've created and started oh playing my. it? So, my first character, I I think I made a, an Osamodos. <gasps> and I, I leveled it up to level like 30 something. <laughs> and wow. I kind of I kind of stopped playing my Osamodos at level 30 something. Mm -hmm. And I was just killing. My last memory of playing my awesome models was killing Boos. You know the What's Boos that? around the Feka Temple? I don't know why, but I just really liked the leveling around the Boo area because I felt like I was getting a lot of XP when doing that. And they also felt kind of easy to um, to defeat <laughs> because they were the same mob repeated. It wasn't like other different mobs in the same map. And they would be like very like standard in how they attack and stuff. So, you know, being the level 30 something character with no gear, it's kind of hard to level up in a few different areas, but in that area was actually super easy. Quite, so yeah, yeah that was my first so. character. Mm. And then I was like, okay, I don't think I can actually advance with this character too much. I'm going to play a different character. And when I started playing my other character, me and my other uh, my other friend, we stopped actually getting along together. Uh, well, I mean, we didn't really stop getting along, but we stopped kind of like playing together mm -hmm. as much. And I was on my own now. So it was like, me on my own in Dofus, what do I play? What is the best class for any PVM and PvP content in the game? What can you play if you have only one brain cell and you can't do anything else other than That's like eat and sleep during the day? It's, it's the cra. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> it's the cra. <laughs> oh, no. So, so I, I started playing cra and I leveled up uh, to level like, um, I think 60 something. And I got fascinated by this idea of doing PvP and looking out for other people to go and get um, what would be Chapas or whatever it's in English. You know, the Brackamarian versus Bonta PvP back in the day oh, where you yeah, could go yeah, seek yeah. out tracking. people and hunt them down. Yeah, yeah, tracking. <laughs> so I would I would do that a lot. That was like my favorite wow. part of Dofus. Yeah. And I would have a, an agility set with a Tothi and a, co a Tofu Cape and all that and a Dragon Turkey too. And I would get commas off of, um, what was that I did? Oh yeah, I think I leveled up Farmer to get commas and also Baker because uh, it was a different profession back then, right? Mm. And I leveled those two up and I made commas that way. But then I figured out a way to make commas that no one else knew back then. Ooh. Well, I lied. Probably more people knew, but I was like one of the only people that took advantage of it, which was getting MP runes using the, um, the Paleta um, shovel. I don't know how what the name is in English, but it was like a shovel that gave like an MP for level forty uh -huh. something, and and you break uh, it, crush it. Yeah, you break it. They gave you MP runes. Now this was kind of rare because not a lot of people were into shovel making in Dofus because you can mm. only choose like multiple professions, right? So I went out of my way. I created the new craw. I started farming and I leveled up miner because the main ingredient for that one was cobalt. So nice. I leveled up Miner, I was AFK in the Cobalt Mines a lot of the time and I would um, <laughs> and I would make loads of these uh, of these shovels and I would get millions of commas. Mm -hmm. And when this happened, I, I was like, if I have this many commas, I could make the best cra in the game for PvP at level yeah. 80. So that's <laughs> what I did. I, I decided to go out of my way to scroll this newly created character in every wow. single element at level one 
which back then was a pretty big deal. And then I would level it up to level 80 or 90, I think. And I would put like a 12 AP, 6 MP item set on it. And I would PvP, but I wouldn't do it normally. I would level up Wisdom as my primary stat. And I would focus on removing MP and AP. Oh my god. As a crap. No. It was so, no. it was super disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember oh fighting um, Sakers that were level 200. I would do very little damage to them. But they would leave the game because they were like, I can't move. I can't oh do anything. My God. And I'm like, you're, yeah, you can't. being called out in chat. <laughs> Singed the way not to get. <laughs> the play style has seeped into the office. <laughs> well, this was, oh, no. this was before I played. This was before I played League of Legends, by the way. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you can kind of tell why I played Singed but, um, afterwards, you know? <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> uh -oh. I, I really, I, I had this really big thing. Or played unorthodox builds and characters and ways of playing the game. So whenever yeah. I play the game, I would kind of seek a way in how to play it, kind of quote unquote break in the game, and play it my own way. So I'm surprised you I didn't go this... with Zellor then. Let me finish talking. Oh, I... there is Zellor. <laughs> let me, oh, let me oh, finish oh. talking. <laughs> oh, potatoes gonna have a good time. <laughs> so, so this, I only had one character, but of course, uh -huh. after you have one character. Thinking that it was a multi-account server, if I wanted yeah. to actually get a hand in the game and start doing more content and stuff like that, I need more characters, right? So what is the best team that combines with a wisdom crowd? I'll give you one second to think, right? Uh. <laughs> Maybe a few characters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alright, cool. So my team was a chance any. And a ripsa. What? Didn't yeah, you like have a chance only one spell? Yes. <laughs> so, I had the chance in Ibiza. I had an AP removal seller. And I also had an Ayop. The Ayop was the normal one. I don't know why I created an I just really like, I really like big numbers for damage. And I was like, I'm kind of yeah. missing damage with a, with a Wisdom Crab, the chance, <laughs> uh, and Ibiza, and a yeah. seller. What is the class that does the most damage? Let me just put that in into the team. Wow. And I, I started leveling that up, doing other content, and uh, then the Masquerader came out. And I'm like, Ooh. I can do pushback damage for this. And so I added it to the team, because I'm like, this is another unorthodox way of playing the game. Yeah. It would be so funny going to Coliseum with my Siller, my Kra, and my Masquerader, and people being so confused, as in like, you have an AP removal Siller, MP and AP removal Kra, and a pushback damage Masquerader? <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> you must have been very popular in Colosseum. <laughs> oh, people hated me. <laughs> I actually received the death threats in Skype from two different people that added me. <laughs> what? <laughs> they just sent me death threats in Skype just because they were not able to use a single action point in Colosseum. It was no. so toxic. <laughs> that is terrible. And no, I'm not taking a Zellor to dreams anytime soon, I don't think. <laughs> oh, I was so fun out. too. I was not satisfied with this though. And I would, of course, eventually level them up. And I leveled them up into having really weird item sets too. Because I, I wasn't going to stop at them being weird themselves. I would, of yeah. course, have them wear weird item sets. My crop. At level 199 was wearing the the class item set with the limbo wand and the pim click as the amulet all right the one that was that like the, one the item one set one range yes and of course i would i would um not do that much damage but i would be a total nuisance because all of my attacks would be super low ap cost I would be able like to spam them spam like a, so like a, an incredible <laughs> amount of times. And I would also have the AP and MP removal trophies on me too. Because oh trophies God. started to come out too once I reached that level. So yeah. I was... <laughs> so Targ, my, if I logged yeah. into one of your accounts right now, your main account, and I double clicked the uh, recall potion, where is it taking me now? It would and take why? you to the lousy pick plane zap. Okay. You you really know why? Is it the Almanax? <laughs> yes, <Okay. laughs> it's the Almanax. <laughs> <laughs> but if I That's if I wasn't one. doing the Almanax, if I wasn't mm -hmm. doing the Almanax, I think the best zap in the game, in my opinion, is the Koalak Breeder Village zap. 
Let's that go. is the best. That is the best zap in the game. If you have a different opinion, you're wrong. I'm sorry. That, that, but that this is, is actually the well. best. Are you saying that just to please me, or do you actually think it? Is this an elaborate? I actually joke think it. You... No, no, okay. I'm actually thinking it. So, but, so the reason is, if you have, if you have to triangulate the positions of the, the all the different zaps in the game, and calculate mm -hmm. the distance between them, and the call like breather zap, and then average that distance out between all of them, you actually get the less amount of distance from zap to zap, in comparison to any other safe zap in the game. Making yes. you use less commas, and also in the long run, saving you commas. Here, if you here, want to get here. rich fast and dopers, use the Kodak like Beatles app, right? <laughs> we do have a piece of soundboard for that, just uh, so people know what Targe is all about. And this is not, while it sounds like her, it won't be her speaking right now. It's a piece of soundboard that we have, which is... Stop being poor. And if you do want to stop being poor, <laughs> the first thing you're going to do is <laughs> go to the Koala app and save it because that is the least distance, at least in my estimate. That's what I found about it. If you want to go to the remote extremes of the map, you find that you you very rarely surpass that 900 commas. Whereas if you save anywhere else, occasionally you'll be hit with 1 to 2k per travel and stuff like that. Do you know how zaps work in Dolphus? Do you know the lore behind them? Is this Bitcoin channel? No, this is not Bitcoin channel. <laughs> I'm not going to do Puppet Master. No, no. We're having a conversation with the latest English content creator for Dofus, which is Tarja right here. So we're getting to know her. We have had a fair bit about her background. And now we're going straight into the part of her playing now and the kind of content that she makes and why she started making it. So thank you for that question about Bitcoin which helps me turn around back to Taj and say <laughs> it is not obvious for me that if you know the game as well as you do and play it as well as you do that you will start making videos about it in the past you've made a guide which is written on a page that does not involve showing face using voice a lot of tech in the background what can you tell us about the transition from i'm enjoying dofus to let's make content and in English especially, which is not your first language as we understand, because Madrid is your city. Oh, I need to, I need to explain that real quick. So my, uh, I kind of grew up watching, um, so I'm going to go on a new, another rant now, okay? I'm sorry, I'm like an old woman, I go on like super old rants, kind of like as <laughs> I've been, um, you know, like uh, when you go to to an old uh, people's home and you talk to someone there and you ask them like questions about their past, they're going like a super like long rant. And that's start me, from basically. 1962 onward. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> everything <laughs> back is in good my context. day. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started watching PewDiePie when I was very young. Uh, I was actually one of his uh, first subscribers, like before hitting 40k subscribers. PewDiePie. So this was like, yeah. So okay. this was like um, right after he stopped making uh, like a shooter video game content, and he started making like Amnesia and Hot Wheels content. And I used to absolutely love watching him. I remember I was um I was I was in my room and I found him on YouTube and I watched one of his videos and I was laughing so hard. And I went I run uh, I ran up to my brother and I'm like, hey, I found this Swedish guy. He makes these really funny videos on YouTube. You should watch him too. And so we started watching YouTube. And that's how we got into watching gaming content on YouTube. Uh, basically just I watching see. PewDiePie. And then every single other channel that I watched on YouTube was basically English most of the time because of that. Because I started watching it in, in English already as is. And I kind of feel like I'm quote unquote the purist when it comes to English compared to, to other um, content creation languages. Yeah. Because I feel like you can reach like a much wider audience yeah. if you do everything in English than if you do it in a in a different language, at least for, for most video games, right? So that's why I, I started doing things in English because my influences were in English for content creation. And also because of my belief system regarding English too. Like when I would join communities and play video games and play with other people, I would mostly seek English speaking communities because I would feel like I'm missing out if I'm not doing that. Yeah, good shout. That is excellent mm -hmm. shout. So th this happened in League of Legends too, which is why when I started playing League of Legends, the guide that I made was in English. And also because the streamers that I, that I watched regarding this champion was, were also in English too. So I, I didn't just make a guide of it. I also started streaming. 
with the guide and the stream was embedded uh, within the guide too. So I didn't really have the, the avatar, but you could hear me too. And I was playing League of Legends and you could hear me and I, and I was, um, yeah, and that was, it was pretty much it. Just the game, my voice and nothing else. And yeah. <laughs> it got pretty, I was, I was kind of, I don't know, uh, flabbergasted by how successful it got. Because I remember reaching like 150 viewers one time on Twitch. Wow. And I didn't even whoa, whoa, know whoa. why that happened. Wow. Yeah. I, I suppose the natural question to ask you about, which is a gross oversight from myself that we didn't do this in the intro, which is what can you tell us about the character that you have right now that moves at the same time oh, as yeah, you? The, For people who don't know, what can you tell us about what is it and why you've picked that sort of presentation uh, to project outwardly your person? What is that all about? Uh, can I? I'm just gonna give like a short answer, and if you only can delve on it afterwards, because sure. I feel like it's gonna be more interesting for people to um, that I talk about other things. I think. Sure, sure, sure. So, I am a furry, uh, unfortunately, and this character over here is basically my persona, which is like my furry OC. Um, she's a dragon, uh, an Eastern dragon, and uh, the unfortunately this is like the outdated version of her, so it's not really up to date with like what she actually looks like nowadays. Um, but hopefully I get like a new version of my avatar done recently with a newer model so I can get it like up to date and I can stream with it too and and use it to make uh, content creation. But yeah, that's awesome. basically the short version. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. get later uh, into it again because sure, sure, sure. I honestly don't think how I don't know how interested people are in this chat in, in furries. So. <laughs> I suppose it's one of those things that most people don't know anything about it and the few people that know it know it very well so it's stranger to me and in preparing for this conversation i had to look up a lot of terms like furry uh, png tubing um and looking yeah. at the tech behind it it's not as easy as it might look there's a lot of stuff behind in the design of the persona then you use a camera with a spe special app that tracks your facial features and movements but i suppose the question i wanted to ask you is is this um what 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 would make someone make this choice as opposed to just fire up a camera and show their face or not have a camera to begin with is there anything that i've missed about this whole genre which is growing now in the internet oh it's it's part of like being a furry a lot of the time being a furry is kind of using your character to express yourself Okay. And that's why people wear like fursuits or the commission art to do a lot of these other things. And this kind of naturally extends over to like um, being like a YouTuber or a PN YouTuber or whatever. You'll see a lot Internet. of like popular um, furry YouTubers will be VTubers a lot of the time. Yeah. Or they'll have like the, their character uh, as, a, as a 3D model or 2D model. Mm -hmm. And they'll be like using the voice and they'll be tracking like their, their motion. And stuff. I kind of have very um, rudimentary gear for being a VTuber. I only have my camera, but other people have like their like leap motion for their hands too, and yeah. they also have like a more like better face tracking. Right now, yeah. I kind of have like a face tracking where I'm able to look disappointed, or I'm able to look surprised. But I have to press buttons and I have to go out of my way to do that. I can't really mm. naturally like detect the um, using the software that I have at the moment. So yeah. Gotcha. It's incredibly intricate for people watching and hearing this. I thought it was some sort of tech that you could just transpose onto a video and that's it. But it turns out you have so many moving parts in the background to make that happen. And now I sort of understand better why you would do that in the first place. Um, the most difficult suppose... part is definitely the, the part from the artist where the artist has to like create the model or use like a base of the model and then retexture the model to make it whatever you want to make it for your character that's the most difficult part mm -hmm. my part is not like as hard as it as it is compared to the artist's part but then make again it. i'm not an artist i just pay someone to do it for me so fantastic fabulous we were talking about content creation and i've segued into this topic and we got a bit lost um can you <laughs> tell us about um, i've noticed while doing some research that you had multiple other channels who are so much bigger than the one that you have right now for Dofus. That means Dofus has yeah. come at the end of a series of attempts, videos, creations, and things like that. Well, I only have two channels. Sure, <laughs> it's yeah. not really like multiple. But I basically have this one, this main channel that I have called Kizzy Noodle, which mm -hmm. has around uh, 3,000 subscribers. And it's mostly a Stellaris focused channel. So I started making Stellaris content. Um, 
I'd like to say around more than a year. Like maybe even almost uh, two years, right? And the reason I started a Stellaris channel was because I would be playing in these PvP lobbies, but which by the way, Stellaris, it's a forex strategy game, kind of like Civilization, but you play in real time. It's not like turn-based. Mm -hmm. So imagine Civilization, but in real time and in space. So that's a game, the kind of game I would play. And I would be in these lobbies where I would play PvP Stellaris, where we have like 20 people in the same lobby and we play against each other until like we have like a winner or we just get bored or whatever. And people would go out of my way to, or out of their way to ask me like, hey, how do you do this build? Or hey, how do you do this? And I would explain it to them. And then I thought to myself, what if I just did like a YouTube video explaining how to play a certain build and I can just send them that instead. Incredible. And that's what I did. And you can see the first video that I have is a, um, a build video. 21,000 views, way, 19, 16, 15k views. Most, your lowest video is about 1,000 views. This is incredible for content creation. Is yeah, what, I what definitely do you have like a, to? I think I have to attribute it to the, um, well, to multiple things. First of all, I had the help of an editor for my first video, and sorry, my first series of videos, who helped me do, if you go to my, um, you see the Pregenerator Hive video over there? Uh, which one? And my channel. The Pregenerator Hive video. It's like my first video in, my, in the channel, like ever. This one? Ah, oh, the oldest one. Yeah. If you go to the, to minute three and 11 seconds into the video, and you play that without volume, <laughs> you can see, you can see Alex Jones there. I'll talk, I'll talk about that in a second. But yeah, you see, um, minute, minute three and see? eleven seconds. Three eleven. Yeah, there you go. So you can see those animations. Those are not made by me. Those were done by someone that was a professional in the industry in like graphics and animation, uh, who is really good at what he does, and who I shout out in the description. And thanks to his help, I was able to dish out very high quality videos for at the time at least for what i did uh, just starting off youtube into and doing these guides so i had his help in doing these uh, animation parts of the videos and then on top of this the stellaris content creation community is very supportive of like okay. other content creators as soon as i i launched like one or two videos i got contacted by other content creators i got shout out i i also had like um Collabs with other content creators, and that really helped me grow my channel too. At the start of the, of it too. Wow. And lastly, the Paradox, which is the company responsible for making Stellaris, reached uh -huh. out to me, and I was able to collab with them to release a video on their official Stellaris channel on YouTube. Wow. So these you three things the really helped me grow Bamis. at the start. The Stellaris Bamis. <laughs> 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 so I, I was thanks to these three things i was able to grow really quickly um at this when i made videos i hit like more than a thousand subscribers in around a month wow out of making these different videos and it would be they would be relatively popular too um as you can see that is so incredible. i think um that's something i kind of i don't want to like this on the uh, uh dofus community too much but i really wish that Dofus had something like this, where you could do like content creation with the actual official Dofus channel and release videos that are collabing with content creators from the community in their channel, kind of portraying their game in different things. Mm -hmm. I think that would be super nice to have, and it would give more light to the English speaking community that we have, because we have a lot of English content creators that I didn't even hear about. So when I started making my channel, I didn't know who you were. I had no idea. I only had a, an idea of who Benjamin Might was, and also who Essex was. This hurts. And that's it. It hurts. She still does not know my, who I am by the looks of it. <laughs> She's still talking about it's, this. It's, it's okay. It's okay if you're like a small English <laughs> Dolphus content creator, you'll be... No, no, you'll grow. I'm only kidding. But um, <laughs> I've only recently started myself about six months ago. In uh, New Year's Eve, I've decided to make content and not just silly little guides that I would post on YouTube sparsely once every... Three months yeah, I think the first like guide I ever sense. watched from you was the Meijin guide. The Meijin guide, because I... Sense. yeah. There was, like, not that many guides from Meijin and Dofus, especially in English. There was, like, this one channel called, I think it was Defy. 
yes. and he made like a Meijin guide like a like a long time ago, and mm. I was looking for a more up to date one, um, and then I found your guide, and I'm like, this is a really nice guide where in not that much time explains like the core details. It's not that well edited, but at least it's very informative. You heard and it. Really My videos it. are not very well edited. This is why we have Tarja on for the <laughs> reality <laughs> shapes. <laughs> she dishes it as it is. But just to piggyback on that one, it is one of the main focuses of my channel uh, going forward, starting from next week, is to put guides up there. I want everybody to benefit from the knowledge I've accumulated over years and my ability to convey complex things in a simple message, so to speak. The editing will still have to improve, as Charger has said. <laughs> Maybe no, but your editing a got a lot tricks. better recently. <laughs> your current, your I think your most recent video, where you're like uh, on the news and like reading out the patch notes, that video is, I think, probably your best edited video on your channel right now. In it my can opinion. still improve, but yes, I see the, the point that you're trying to make. Thank you for that. It's fancy what you yeah. can do when you have a lot of time and willingness. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you had the success with Stellaris. You were making fantastic videos. You had all the support and everything. And I want that to tie into your experience with Dofus because making content is not evident. It's hard when you get started. So you had, let's say, a flashback of making one guy and reaching nearly 1 million people. That's such a big number. It doesn't even make sense when you try and think about it. And then you went to Stellaris and you had all this support and rally around you and the official company that makes it trying to feature you on their website on their uh, channel and things like that then what happened when you started when you decided to make youtube oh boy Ad office YouTube oh channel? boy that's a totally different story that's uh <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's it's night and day so making country cushion for these other um platforms or sorry not platforms but games was a much different experience because they either have a a much larger player base so mm -hmm. League of Legends is like one of the most played games in the, in the entire world. Yeah, so they have a much bigger sense. player base that was interested in like the content that you made way more. Or B, they have a much dedicated um, like content creation platform where people would help each other way more. The official account would actually recognize you too and feature you too. And they're like probably one of the best companies to make um, a videos for or content creation for, in, in my opinion, honestly. And with Dofus, I released a video and it kind of felt like I dropped a coin in a well. I never heard this flash. Wow. That's that's wow. what it felt, honestly. I went out of my way to edit this farming guide that I did, which was way more edited than a lot of my Stellaris videos that I that I made back in the day. Mm. And I did quite a bit of research too, and I put so much effort into it, and when I released it, I'm like, this feels so much different than releasing content creation for, for Stellaris. Like, it feels like I basically, I did that. I dropped like a coin on a wall and never heard a splash. So it is definitely way, way harder. And I thought to myself, well, maybe I just got unlucky. Maybe it's just one video, it's whatever. Um, I'll just keep releasing videos. I started doing like a series of videos called Dofus and Chill, where I played the game from scratch and I released those daily. Uh, would be like uh, almost an hour long videos and then i would also release like more edited videos such as guides which i would release or montages of my character and then i would also release round videos and i would notice that my channel would would not really grow much yeah even after doing that for like an entire month mm -hmm. and i was like this is not working because i would compare it to stellaris and i would be like my growth is 10 times as slower as it was for stellaris Yes. And that was even taking into account the fact that I announced my channel in my other channel, making it so that I had like a few people coming from that channel to this Dofus channel. And even then, it was super slow. Mm -hmm. So that's when I released a video called My Future on YouTube, where yes. I talk about a few different things. I talk about my history in content creation, my experience in content creation, and my plan on how to make Dofus like a game where you can actually create content and be somewhat successful in the content that you actually make in Dofus. Fab. Uh, would you be able to, just in three minutes, because I'm conscious of time and we're nearing the one hour mark and I like to take a break, just for the sake of the conversation for people, the guests as well, to take a three yeah, to yeah. five minute break at the one hour mark. Uh, would you be able to 
recap that for us uh, as succinctly as possible while telling us the feel of it what was the mindset with which you made it because you talk about making something for the office still after the initial let's call it disappointment of not getting anything from the countless hours you spent editing what is that video all about my my mindset was that i it's a game that i love because i've been playing it for so many years and had so much fun playing it and Stellaris is a game that I love a lot, but it kind of comes and goes. I'll feel like playing it for like a couple of different months, and then I stop playing it for like multiple months in a row, and then mm. I'll come back there and play it again. And with Dofus, this is kind of another thing that happened. So I'm like, I want to create content in a game that I've always really loved, and I liked it the entire way, and I've n never got bored, you know? Mm -hmm. So I would make content for this game, and then after releasing a couple of videos, I felt like the content was so much less noticed than in my other like uh, content creation ventures. Mm -hmm. But I would kind of chalk it up to it just being unlucky. So I would keep doing it for one month, kind of to test the waters. But even after one month, I would notice that it doesn't really matter um, if I improve in the, in the editing or whatever, it still doesn't get noticed as much. Mm -hmm. So that's when I stopped making content for, for Dofus, uh, at least in that channel. And I decided to change my focus in how I'm going to do that in a way in which it actually brings viewers to Dofus. And okay. we can talk about that after. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Uh, I usually <laughs> have a unique question that I pose to every guest during my conversation, which is the result of hours of research in them, which can be challenging. And I will put you on the spot when we return. And it has to do with this very topic that you've mentioned right now. I will leave the suspense going. We will take, how much would you fancy charge? Three, five minutes? Just so we can refresh Um, what, Whatever you prefer, honestly. I don't really, don't really mind. Either, either works. Let's do a five minute so I can, I'll run a commercial so we can be uh, free from that for the next hour. And let's refresh our glasses, our drinks, and be back in three, uh, in five minutes maximum. All right. Guys, we shall be right back in about five minutes and we will be with you very soon. Right before we left, we were talking about a, an important experience that you've had whereby you've created content in other games and it was this rally in support. You had a lot of positive immediate feedback and then you swapped into making the content that is so much better than everything you've ever done before. You've pushed your editing to the next level for the game that you love the most and you've had the most disappointing experience at all. Now I do have an interesting question to ask but before that I feel like I've missed an important component that I want to bring to the table before we actually pose the question so it all makes sense when I say things like you've pushed your uh, edit into the next level it means nothing for our viewers yet but for that I would love for you to give us a sort of quick recap of what were the biggest influences on your content creation because we've looked at some of your videos earlier and there is definitely a unique style there and I will play one of your videos while you tell us about it so as to illustrate what exactly it is I mean when I say that um okay so this is actually kind of weird but I think none of my none of the influences that I've had regarding content creation actually um like what's the name are a part of any of my videos nowadays. I think the only part that I've carried from my influences in like ha the, the stuff that I did was mostly for my um for my YouTube. Sorry, not for my YouTube, for my humor, sense of mm -hmm. humor and like how I view kind of things and how I how I analyze uh, the games. Cause uh the the content that I watched when I was younger was mainly live streams. I didn't actually watch that much that many YouTube videos after watching um the uh what's the name I, yeah i didn't really watch that many youtube videos after watching pewdiepie i kind of switched over to watching live streams instead and mm -hmm. most of my influence was in live streams and live stream highlights instead uh -huh. so which is one of my first um videos on my youtube channel was a live streams uh highlight video right okay. and the influence that i that is having me kind of it's kind of weird because i've had influences for like from all around i've had influences from like league of legends uh streams uh, which would be a bit toxic sometimes and there's definitely a, uh, a fact of edgy humor involved over there i would have an influence from like pewdiepie and these other people who at the start were edgy but they 
turn out to be a bit more homeless. Uh, sorry, not homeless. Uh, wholesome later on. That's two very different words that I got mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then later on, I I got into other content creators that are definitely more controversial, like Destiny and Asmongold. And those influenced me quite a bit too. So I that's why some of the jokes in the videos that I have are a bit spicy. So I'll make a I'll make a joke about like um as you saw there was an Alex Jones uh, edit in one of my videos yeah, at the start of the video. Stuff. That's like <laughs> <laughs> that's why I'm kind of spicy. It's probably due to like some of those influence that I that I've had in in my videos. But it influenced mostly my sense of humor rather than like my editing style. I think my editing style was mostly influenced by my own editor who told me to present things in, in this kind of way. And I'm like, sure, I love this. And also because I kind of go out of my way to undocumenting things and laying them out in a certain fashion, as you can see with my League of Legends guide. And uh, when it comes to college, I do the same thing. For every single one of my classes, I have like an entire like quote unquote book written of notes that are okay. like detailed and are, are formatted and all that, but yeah. <laughs> Impressive. They're a content creator at heart. And I imagine if you ever have to do a presentation, it's usually a banger of a presentation. And if it's a video, holy smokes, even better. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> nice. I was so into that when I was a, when I was a kid. I would be so into astronomy. Astronomy was like such a big passion of mine. And uh, I remember in one of these science classes, they we were learning about the solar system. I made such a banger presentation for the different planets on how and how it works. And uh, I would like dive deep in like how PowerPoint works to actually make it like feel super nice to to watch. But yeah. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. Love the answer. And it's impressive how wide the influences are. You can clearly see it in the type of humor that you employ during those uh, <laughs> those videos. And I think yeah. that is one of the reasons why um, Gluto and uh, most of the people at the pub tend to think that you're on the younger side because you're more in touch with the internet culture, the deep internet culture that is young at heart, the humor of PewDiePie, the humor of a lot of content creators that I've frankly never engaged with. Like I've heard of PewDiePie, but I couldn't say why he is famous or when you say that you found some of his, his videos funny, it's funny. I've watched some of his content, but I'm not in touch with that kind of deep humor that you've had to be part of maybe at a certain point in your life. Oh, wait, I forgot a major influence. I forgot a major influence. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I forgot something. I, I'm kind of I'm kind of ashamed of it, okay? This is a deep um, ashamed of mine that I was ever interested in this, but I gotta admit, <laughs> I was into watching MLG parodies. I don't know if you're familiar Ooh. with those, but no. MLG parodies are like very highly edited videos that are very meme, but they're like kind of for brain rot. So you'll watch okay. them and they'll have like 20 edits per second, of like oh my god um, how fast moving Call of this Duty. is yeah it's i'm gonna put, it's super put one bad. up on the screen so people know what we're talking about the memes but it will be... oh my god the speed of it <laughs> but it wouldn't be like an actual call of duty like video it would be like mm. mlg montage of like teletubbies or mlg montage of like something else i would like watch those videos with my brother we would laugh so much watching them and i have so many edits <laughs> so that kind of brain rot my brain and sometimes when I watch my own content, I feel like it's too slow, which is why sometimes oh, wow. I feel like I need to add way too many things. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good times. Nevalon is vibing with your choice of uh, brain rot. I think he's oh. also familiar with that kind of uh, humor. That's incredible. Uh, I will sadly loop back into the question that I had for you, which is a central one to do with your experience of creating content in Dofus. The moment I got acquainted with your sort of background, I realized that you had a big successful channel that when you push a video on the very first hour, you have about 600 people that watched it. The number of comments are staggering as well. And the question I wanted to ask you really is, uh, it starts from the video you've made about the direction of your channel and the explainer of the current situation. And I couldn't help but feel as though you haven't spent enough time getting to know the landscape of Dofus in order to try and operate the solution that you propose. And my question for you is, do you think 
English content creation in Dofus is something that is doomed, that is unsuccessful unless you take it upon yourself to do the marketing job of Dofus to bring people and interest them. If unless you did that, it will never grow. Or is there something that you're missing when you look at people like Bamis who can make one video a year and rack up fifty thousand views effortlessly when the rest of us are struggling to get one thousand over months and months and months? What is your appreciation? I think of it's uh... you said? I think it's a bit of both. I think the reason why Bamis was so successful is also because he presented the the Dofus um, video game to an audience that never played Dofus before a lot of the time. And mm -hmm. he presented it in a way in which even people that don't actually play Dofus can go out of the way to enjoy that video. And the problem with Dofus is it's not really like a game that has a very big audience in like the English speaking community in the world. Which means that you gotta create that audience for yourself when you're making this content. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the the best way to make Dofus content creation is not necessarily making content for people that play Dofus, but more so making content to get people into playing Dofus. Mm -hmm. Which is why I think the video for, from Bamas is like such a big deal. And one of the um, the reasons why I think this is the case is because another YouTuber that I really like to watch is Pyrus Cynical, and his channel evolves around making like really big video, uh, video essays on video games or movies or shows uh, a lot of the times that are not even very well heard of or not mm -hmm. even played much he made this like really long video on this one game called cruelty squad which i never heard of it it's like this obscure like um old finnish game which has like doom graphics uh made like oh, a long time ago that video is four hours long and it has like millions of views and he he basically got people that were not interested in that game to watch that video and enjoy it. And now maybe they are actually interested in the game after he laid it out. And I think Dofus needs something like that, which is why in the video I was mentioning like um, making this type of content myself too. Because I think it's what Dofus kind of needs for you to actually have like a quote unquote successful like video on the game. Mm hmm. And the, the first part of my question, if you'd like to go back and address it in some words, uh, don't you think that you would be doing Ankama's job by essentially building up a new interest in the game externally? A hundred percent. Yeah. Yes. A hundred percent. You would be building, you would be doing Ankama's job and going out of your way to do this. Uh, and Ankama should already be doing this. They should be having a YouTube channel that, um, I mean, they, they have a YouTube channel, right? And they have a couple of videos there, but I don't know why. It just doesn't feel like they're really pushing their content out there as much. And something that really, maybe I'm super fixated on this, but something that really, that I really dislike is the fact that it doesn't work on Steam. <laughs> Steam is such a big platform for people to discover different games. Yeah. And a lot of people that play the game in, in Dofus in English that have actually learned about the game that I talked to actually learned about it on Steam. Because they yeah, searched they up MMORPG that. and then they, they found Dofus and they're like, wow, this is an MMORPG that looks nice, I'm going to play it. And they did, and then mm -hmm. they stopped working and then they, they stopped playing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's really dumb and they've cut out like a huge amount of people from playing the game just because of that. Yeah, uh, Gluto is giving a bit more context about the Steam Saga. It's um, um, the fact that you only are allowed to play one account, but Dofus is a multi-account game, as you very well know. And so that didn't work out between the two of them eventually, which I think unless one of them drops a big tenant of the way they do business, I don't think that it will ever come back. Or maybe I'm wrong about that. Is there a possibility of it ever returning? Ah, if they added the hero system, they could add it back and everything could be better. Okay, see, I love that piece of uh, information because Technically, the hero mode, you're only playing one account, despite having three or more loaded into one. That is really interesting. Do you have any thoughts about uh, the hero mode at all, Tarj? I actually have no idea what the hero mode is. What is the hero mode? Uh, the hero mode is essentially a feature that exists on Wark4, where you could play as many accounts as you want, but they're only loaded on one client. And so when you move your character from map to map, all of them sort of follow, and then you can switch between them from mm -hmm. that one client oh gotcha um the way that i really like how it's i really like how it's done in walkful where you have one account and you can make multiple characters in that same account 
and you can switch between them when you're in battle. Uh, yes. I think that would be probably the most convenient way, but they would probably not do that because then you have only one account being subscribed and not multiple accounts being subscribed. Yes. So. That is one I, of I the considerations. I feel like something they could do is they could release different types of subscription in Dofus. So you can have like normal subscription and then a subscription that if you pay more, you can play with multiple characters at the same time. Okay. I think that might solve the issue. Because I think in Wakfu they have that for them, going for them. Where they oh, have so multiple they have a solution types of subscription. Have you but played then again, Wakfu I. Uh, yeah, I've played. I haven't really played it that much, though. I've only reached like level 100. So I haven't really played it too much in depth. But it's a. Uh, I really like that part of the game, at least. It felt like I could genuinely play the game with just one account. Mm -hmm. And it would be really fun. In a multi account yeah. server, by the way. So, yeah. Uh, we have a comment. I think this is Risen Rogue in, um, in the chat. Nice to see you, man. I appreciate it. Thank you for passing by. I have seen the video that you talk about on how to improve Dofus Touch, how to make it better and things like that. But sadly what we have found is that there is very little impact in the... You can put in as much work as you want that I don't know that it translates automatically to the studio listening to feedback. Uh, I don't know why that is. Maybe it's liable to change in the future. But I love the impulse and I love the work that you've put in that on that video and I sincerely hope that they do take it into account because we see that it's a recurring theme. Charge here is also doing her part by leveraging an existing channel that has more than 3000 followers to introduce them to Dofus. Whereas as we've established, she is doing that in the full knowledge that it's way above her pay grade. She shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't be trying to advertise a game that I have no stake in. I don't own the company to do that much effort, nor do I get paid to do the advertisement for it and be targeted for it, see how impactful or not, and you know, that you better. Oh, but we do have a stake whatever. in the game though, which is why we do it. At the end of the day, we have like a big emotional stake in the game because it's one of the games that we've played for a really long time and we're yes. super invested in it because of it too. So having True. it actually grow, even if we don't really get a financial outcome out of it, we still get a pretty mm. big emotional one out of it to be able to enjoy it more, so. I'll, I'll qualify yeah. that better because I'm a finance guy. I, when I mean stake as in stakeholder, as in ownership, part ownership. So if the studio does well, you Oh yeah, I thought you, I thought you meant it as in like, like, okay, gotcha. Whereas if the studio does well, someone who owns shares sees their value, appreciate, and they do better in life if they can share some of those, sell some of those, and they can translate those into financial success. Whereas for us, it's just the game exists or it doesn't exist regardless of uh, in which state it does we always want it to improve but it shouldn't be incumbent upon the upon the players to better the game whereas because we don't have the means to at the end of the day or the budgets for it for that matter yeah thank you very much for that answer uh that is an interesting uh, suggestion gluto they could, he's saying that he could um they could solve for the hero subscription uh issue that you've uh, mentioned charge by adding slots that you buy to unlock them as part of your subscription so that could possibly solve for it but it's entirely up to them how they want to uh, implement that what we know for sure is that it's not a priority now or at the beginning of next year they are working on delivering unity so that we can have a viable functional uh, game that is successfully transitioned to a new engine and then start work on different things uh, comes 2025. So we're in for a really good Christmas. Are you are you hyped about the Unity arrival uh, charge? I'm so hyped about it. I think I've been Let's waiting go. for it for so many years. <laughs> you know, no longer will be those days of walking into a zap with like 50 different people and yeah. your PC feeling like it has a hamster wheel to power itself <laughs> when you do that. So yeah. no longer the days. Nice, nice. Um, I have a little segment where I wanted to get your opinion on some facets of the game because you, uh, unlike most people that play the game, have a very unique perspective. Uh, when you speak of games, you sort of know the classification, the category of it, the way you talk about MMORPG and things like that, you use keywords about games which tell me, tells me you understand them in a different way than the rest of us. So I wanted your perspective on some aspects of the game first one is have you seen the presentation they've made for us about unity gameplay itself the special fight at the japan expo 
I I think I've seen like a few clips of it, but I haven't actually watched the entire thing. Was it the one uh, where it had the the huge portal behind? Or the huge yes, like that's um, the one. Yeah. That's the one. Yeah, I've seen a few want... clips, but I haven't actually watched the, the video. I wanted to get your impressions about that gameplay being smooth and being run on a laptop and things like that. What are your hopes? What are your expectations of it? Did you notice anything that really appealed to you? Anything that you thought that could be better solved before they release it? Any thoughts? In I general? feel like the um, so far in the the Unity update, uh, what kind of what I kind of don't like is the UI. Uh, they definitely improved the UI quite a bit, but there's like still a few facets of it that I, I mean. They make it modular, which is super nice for people that are like uh, already playing a game where you can actually change the UI, lay it out how you want and all that. But the yeah. fact that it's modular, especially for newer players, might be a bit weird. Because I don't know, I don't know uh, for you, but for me, if I get into a game and I start playing it, and the UI is like a bit modular and you can change it and all that, it feels like game is uh, it feels like the game is way more complicated than it actually is. I see. So. I feel like making the UI more kind of static, at least, or have an option to do so, and have it be more like new user friendly. It might be like a like a way to go, at least for Unity. But that's like enough. the one thing that I that I noticed. Mm -hmm. And the next question I wanted to ask you is: the beta is opening in a few days, on the thirteenth of December. And to anyone else in chat, I will show you how to get reminders so you don't have to commit this information to memory. All you have to do is, oh, let me get rid of this, boom, boom, and boom. I've put the links of. Oh, what is Discord that? That's a uh, server with the with the sock, by the way. Is that the crusty sock from Eslix? <laughs> no, 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 that's Uz, <laughs> uh, who's a French uh, streamer. Uh, I will pay attention to what you can see on my uh, screen next time because you're incredibly observant. <laughs> so. <laughs> If you want to know when the beta is opening or have any question about when the next live, next event or anything, I am doing my absolute best alongside Nio, Neo and many people in the uh, international pub to keep this event tab so well filled up for you guys so you can get the information. You don't have to worry about what is happening or when it is. We do the effort of bringing everything to you at the top of the tab. You click events and then you scroll. You should be able to know what is happening right now and into the future and as far as the beta is concerned if you were wondering when is it going to happen this is all the information in one place for you it starts in the 13th of august and i've put a date a filler date because we don't know exactly when it's going to end but we know that it will end and unity will get rolled out with the haven't announced when it's happening so i've put a filler date essentially it's a three month long beta for those of you who have played betas in the previous feed, uh, previous uh, iterations of the game, you know that they're usually a two to three week affair, whereas this one is going to be three month long. And I'm saying all of this because Charge is mentioning some things that she has noticed about the game. All of you will have noticed things that you liked or disliked about the game generally. They have practically begged us to give them feedback during this beta. And this ties in neatly to the question I wanted to ask you, oh Charge. What are the first few things that you're doing when the beta is open, you have your hands on it, what are you going to do to explore the game and understand and appreciate Unity? What dungeons? What are you doing to break the game essentially? I'm going to just play the game as I usually sorry, play the game as I usually do. Okay. And I will be <laughs> doing the line. So I will be doing the Incarnum questline. I'll be doing the Dofus questline, sorry, the uh the Astrip questline too. Mm -hmm. I'll be doing the, the questline in like level order. And I'll be kind of playing like I do in my Dolphus Chill series where I start from scratch, playing everything normally like I usually do then. And nice. I would appreciate like my level of enjoyment and compare that to like how I usually do in Dolphus. Um, and that's how I would kind of gauge like how the beta is for me at least. I can tell you have given it some thought and I love that you had that one ready. <laughs> I, I actually I actually did and that was that was quite on the spot, so <laughs> <laughs> that's incredibly quick and witty. Uh, chat is on the jokes and they're saying the first thing you're doing when Unity rolls out is have an ice cream and then think about what you're trying to do. <laughs> I hate to disappoint you guys. She will be having ice cream, but she's already thought about what she's going to do. <laughs> Uh, so the, the, the favorite, my fa the best ice cream topping. I'm sorry, but if you disagree with me, you have the wrong opinion. The best ice cream, like flavor that you that there ever exists in the world, 
is vanilla. All right, you can combine vanilla with absolutely everything. Like, no, doesn't that matter what it is. Doesn't matter if it's chocolate. <laughs> doesn't matter if it's trashatella. Doesn't matter at all. Vanilla <laughs> is like the go-to. It's like the an Uno wild card, you know, wow. that you can just put out there, put it in your ice cream, and eat it and enjoy it. Right? It works That's, uh, the with best. everything. I see. <laughs> That's incredible. Thank you for that. <laughs> I hope it doesn't start a war because we do have some members that are quite strong opinion they have strong opinions about what they like <laughs> opinionated <about> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah opinionated yeah that's brilliant that's brilliant um i suppose we can segue into the penultimate we se we have two segments left the one the one that i call quick fire which is one where i will put you further on the spot by firing questions at you and i want you to tell me what the first thing that comes to mind is the first answer is the one that we want. If it is surprising, which I foresee will very likely be, given everything we've heard from you today, we will then ask you why do you think what you think? Why that is the answer that you have? And then at the end, um, I like to do this as a little gesture to everyone that accepts to be on my podcast, which will be a promotion uh, time for you to get as excited about your future content give us a f vision of the future show us especially how we can best support you going forward right are you ready for the quick fire round Taj? uh yeah sure let's do this chat feel free to participate there will be no fighting today gluto ice cream flavor vanilla wins because our guest said so and that's the end of it <laughs> cool so, Wait, how long is this section, by the way? Like, just uh, I'm not entirely to... sure. Did you have any? What? Uh, uh, it, it was just because uh, I kind of left the the fairy thing like before, because uh, okay. for the very oh, last thing. Oh, you wanted thing. to go back to that. Yeah, because I remember how I mentioned that, and I don't think that many people are going to be interested in it at the start. So I thought it might be better to mention it at the end, right? So at the end, so, I'll yeah. tell you what. Why don't we do that immediately after the quick fire round and then you can follow that with promotion so we know a bit better, a bit more about you, the person and your inclinations and then we can get to right, the gotcha, gotcha. part where you get excited about the future. Which, right, believe it nice. or not, is one of my favorite... Um, it's weird to say that given it's the end of a conversation but it is one of the segments that I find the most interesting because that's where you know what sorts of future to expect from that creator are they thinking about more actions coming or are they like yeah these are all my channels just give me a like and that's all there is to it or they tell you i'm looking for someone to collaborate get in touch i want to do this i want to do that i need help with this and you can tell that there will be so much in the pipeline down the road having said that charge i'm going to change the type of music to something a bit more upbeat and all right we're gonna have Savant in the background, or Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the music genres that Charge is heavily into, and I love it because it fits neatly into a period of my years where I used to listen to music like this, and I love that she's revived that aspect of my past through music. Thank you very much for that. So, first questions first. We've mentioned Previously, we've talked about classes, the ones that you played, the ones that you haven't played. What class are you mm -hmm. most curious about as it stands right now? Um, the class that I'm the most curious about as it stands right now is the Heliotrop. I've played the Heliotrop um, in the Dofus and Chill account, and I'm very curious about it because I really want to learn about it because I feel like it's a class that has the most potential out of all the classes in the game. The yes. fact that you can build portals and move around them and also throw spells uh, around them and it has like its own mechanic and you can also disable enable them it also messes with monster aggro which is something that no other class in the game does uh like when it comes to the, their spells mm -hmm. is a really big thing for me at least nice. so i'm very interested in the potential that the actual elio trap has in office yeah it's a brilliant class 200 iq and i've definitely learned, learned a lot about it from watching your player uh, office and chill series oh i thought if i unlearned it I'm watching. Okay. <laughs> you are. You're doing so well with it. <laughs> Much better than I am, at least. Uh, what is the one class that you think is super overrated? People should rely on it less. Uh, I think the Crawl is one of the most overrated classes in the game. It, it feels like it's actually really good because you go out of your way to do a lot of damage and all that. But you actually get into it. The only reason it feels like it's good is because it gives you immediate results. It doesn't give you like long-term like results on like different spell damage and stuff. It's just kind of... 
it's kind of like how when you log into social media and you get like likes and subscriptions or whatever it's kind of like uh that thing for your brain that that good old like feeling dopamine. that's what the crowd does yeah whenever you whenever you launch a spell or whatever it's a dopamine hit but it's not yeah. actually rewarding it doesn't lead you anywhere <laughs> in the game it doesn't actually evolve your skill you're stagnated mentally and you're not going in anywhere in Dofus with a crown. So I you better off be playing off some other class. You can <laughs> you should be playing Masquerader instead of Crowd, that's way better. Um, or any other class too, so yeah. I feel personally attacked. I need some non vanilla ice cream <laughs> to extinguish this fire that you've lit under my ass. Next one is you <laughs> are going to start a new adventure in Unity and you're only allowed one class. Which one are you picking? Elliot Trap. Eliotrop again, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, can you this tell is, us I told you, I mean, I, I did mention I wanted to learn it more, so yeah. Makes sense, so in that right. spirit, it is the class that you're most curious about, that you just need opportunities to play it. A, yeah. You have done, can you tell us in passing how many achievement points have you done? Have you engaged with endgame stuff? 15,334. Have you done and a lot I of haven't really... dungeons? The only dungeons I haven't done in Endgame are Belladonna and the Eternal Conflict. Okay, so you've done a lot. That that will be brilliant because your responses will take into account pretty much all of the dungeons in the game. You are an intern at Ankama for some miraculous reason. They need an ice cream gal and you are working around the office. You trip and accidentally delete one dungeon. Which is it? The Kwa Kwa Dungeon. <laughs> what? <laughs> I deleted the Quakwa that. dungeon. The Quakwa dungeon <laughs> is the most, uh, maybe not after the rework, but before the rework, it was the most disgusting, despicable dungeon you could ever do as a fifty, <laughs> as a level fifty character. Imagine going into a dungeon, having a boss with two thousand <laughs> HP, seventy five yeah. percent resistance least, to yeah. every single element that is. Yeah. Uh, that, that you attack with, except one, which of course you don't attack with because you got unlucky and yeah. the Ankama gods hate you. But yeah, that's the that's the dungeon I would actually like um, delete oh, so bad. fabulous. So yeah, I take it that you don't have any strong feelings about this one in particular, you're fine. Oh yeah, no, no strong feelings, just yeah, first <laughs> Amazing, amazing, amazing. After the rework, just uh, between parentheses for everyone watching, the Kwa Kwa family, the entire family has been reworked so that they are susceptible to push back damage. It's a mechanic that has been introduced to initiate new players at low levels to mechanics and dungeon mechanics in general. And the one they've decided to go with is pushback. So if you affect one pushback line of damage, pushback on a, any of the Kwa Kwa family, the boss or any small mob, they lose 10% resistances, all resistances for three turns and you can stack them. So suffice to say, they're incredibly easy to kill nowadays. You just push, 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 and then you can blitz them very um, quickly and easily. Unless you're a seller. Sorry? Unless you're a seller. Zellor, ah, then you don't have pushback. A lot of pushback. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That is terrible. But you don't have any pushback. <laughs> yeah. What is a Zellor anyway? <laughs> Fabulous. So as it stands with the classes that you've tried, which one would you, if one of them had to be deleted to make a round number of 18, which one would you think would go? Bra. <gasps> now this is getting very personal. You know I'm a crame <laughs> and you've said nothing nice about the cra since you started speaking to me. Hey, I used to I used to play cra. I know what it feels like. It's not good for your mental health. All right, we should okay. delete this class. It would definitely improve the amount of like um, mental health in the community by a, a large margin. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Fabulous. A dungeon that you've done and you thought the mechanic, everything about it was just perfect. Nothing to change about it. Just brilliant. Uh, Count Harburg. Oh, for those of you who don't know, Charge has a video solo in Count Harburg. I think it was the first video or show that you've posted. Why is that? That's, that's an incredibly unorthodox answer. I I love I just I just love <laughs> Count Harburg. I love its mechanic. I I love the way it plays. I think it's it's pretty unique, and um, I don't think it's I don't think it's hard. Honestly, it might be a little bit too easy, but I think the the dungeon itself has a really nice mechanic that makes you think it's kind of relatively easy to figure out on your own even without like looking it up in the wiki mm. and um and yeah other other dungeons you're kind of left out kind of guessing what the mechanic is a lot of the time unless you look it up but with count harbor ah. you have it in the actual chat it right when you go you in and you yeah mm. exactly that's i'll take that i'll take that 
What is the dungeon or boss mechanic that you've broken your head to understand so much and you can still not understand it to this day? Oh, I can't actually think of any. Um, <laughs> I, I guess, I guess Berry Bell. No, Berry Bell. Bell. Uh, okay. Yeah, the reason, so the reason I, I can't really quite pin down on like what Berry Bell kind of is, uh, I, I just, I don't know, honestly. Like, I know, I just don't really know the mechanic of like, why'd you get the, the bell on your head or like how uh, it teleports whenever you have the bell on your head and all that kind of stuff. Nice. Um, I remember reading it back in the day, but even then I didn't quite understand it, like, properly. Gotcha, so, yeah. gotcha, gotcha. Is there a spell or a mechanic from the moment you started playing the game that no longer exists that you quite miss and would love to see come back? Oof. Uh, you know the, the awesome other spells that summoned Prespix and the boars and all that? I would love to see <laughs> those come back. I would love to see the awesome others be able to spam you with all the monsters from the Astrid Forest. <laughs> Bring the Astrid Forest to the battlefield. Just for the awesome, that'd be so nice. <laughs> yeah, those were the times, watching an awesome others <laughs> bring an entire forest of mobs. And then when you kill one of its allies, it brings it back as well. And you're like, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> oh yeah, having having the class be the only one to do that was so yes. nice. That and was so cool, I think, I think maybe having that in the class would kind of bring it back a little bit more in PBM. Because right yeah. now it kind of feels like it doesn't really have a place. Uh, yeah. True, 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 true. This is an answer I've never heard before. Thank you, Flammable, for that one. He wishes to bring back two hour long PvP fights. I don't know why you'd want no, those, that. No, those are the ones I specialized in with my crow, you know, with the yeah. MPP removal, yeah? Dealing oh, 20 damage a turn, but making sure there's zero AP MP <laughs> consistently. Yeah, exactly. Oh, la, yeah. La, 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 la. Right, I know you have a taste in design, given that your avatar looks the way it looks, you have specific tastes and preferences and things. When you go around the world of 12, what is the best looking area for Targe? Uh, the best looking area for me is probably... I just really like the, the newer areas. Like, the newer areas look the best, so the Valonia um, Archipelago looks super nice. nice. And I think it's kind of like a shout out to what Unity is going to look like. They yeah. definitely polished it in a way that looks very similar to what we been be getting shown uh, nowadays. So I, I think it, it looks super nice. But that's like in the graphics department. When it comes to like actual like style cosmetics and all that, I of course need to go with Bakamar and the Pandemonium area. Like of course, yes. hands down. Yes, yeah. let's go. <laughs> that is music to my ears. <laughs> I and Kama is listening to this podcast. They don't, just to reassure you. But they are listening. And in the next update. The next patch next Tuesday, they will bring one thing that you mentioned right now. What is it? Any change you want made? Any change, uh, like to the game itself or to the beta? To the game, cosmetics, features, a bug. They're gonna they, they're gonna bring things. back the the eye up jump to five AP, and they're gonna also make it one more range. I hate the fact that they've reduced the range of the eye up jump. Like by one, because I've been using my ILP for so much time already that I'm already used to like the jump being a certain range. Uh... And whenever I'm doing certain maps, I can't <laughs> do the strat anymore in certain maps because the jump is like oh. one less. And I'm just left being like, okay, I just I don't even know how to do this anymore. It's so dumb. So yeah, uh, please. Have they changed the cost of it as well? Because you said the four AP yeah, one. Yeah, it's four AP now, which I I appreciate okay. it's four AP, but it's one less range. Which is kind of bugging me off a lot of the time when I play. So. And do you still have uh, the same passive effect when you jump next to something? Yeah, but it doesn't crit anymore, I think. I think it removed the, the crit. Okay, yeah, I can see that. 4 AP, 1 to 5 range. Is it? Did it used to be 6? Yeah, it used to be 6. Okay, yeah, I see. That is quite annoying because you sort of mechanically know where it can take you and now you have to adjust years of gameplay. Yeah, basically. Nice, 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 nice. Uh, we've mentioned Unity, your thoughts on it. You've told us the thing that you don't want to see when it comes up. But what is the one feature that you are so excited to try and think it will be a major enhancement to your life play in the game? This is not really like a enhancement to the life play in the game or any of that. It's mostly like a, like a, a cosmetic thing. But I would love to walk into a map 
and feel like it's alive. See like the little flowers move, see like the little background move a little bit. Maybe in Incarnum have like the clouds move in the background too. Like the NPC NPCs just kind of move a little bit too. I want to see that so bad. I want to play the game and feel like I'm interacting with a live like game and not with like PNGs on screen. That is remarkable. And on par with what I expected with your appreciation of beauty in general that falls well within it. And your wish will be granted. Have you seen the videos of how Frygos looks like? Yes. Aquadala. I've seen I've seen the video, especially Aquadala. The uh -huh. waterfalls feel so nice. Yeah. Nice. Did that live up to expectations? Is that the kind of things that you'd like to see? Yes, definitely. And I want to see that in every single map in the game. <laughs> oh, let's go. They are redoing it. And on the basis of that, have been able to tell us how many maps are in the entire game. And it's 15,000 that they're going back oh, on. My. Pull in the static image, decomposing it into all the various things that make it, and then animating every single component of it. 15,000 maps with different looks, shapes, components. Fabulous. I mean, yeah, Dofus is made by a, by an artistic company. And one of the things that actually goes kind of unnoticed is the amount of artwork that goes into making Dofus itself and how it's actually kind of a piece of art in itself when you play oh, right. it. So, yeah. I agree. You've told us that you've played in Dragon Heroes, but you do have multiple characters. One thing that I know about mono account players is they usually tend to engage with sidekicks a bit more given that you need someone to duo things and the lowest hanging fruit is to have a sidekick do you have any sort of gold nuggets for us any sidekick that you've tried in one particular situation and it was just amazing that we need to know about um i don't really try out sidekicks that much because i am able to solo things because i'm just that good at the game but basically oh, pop, pop. if i do have to use it <laughs> if i do have to use a sidekick I'll usually go with the Ectope because of the AP and MP, sorry, AP and power and damage reduction. But the one that kind of synergizes super nice with my IOP when I don't really have anything else to go by when it comes to distance mm -hmm. is the Kubitus uh, sidekick. Using Ooh. the Kubitus one, attacking from range kind of fixes some issues that my IOP uh, doesn't have, which is like range I attacks. See. Although now with the update, I can attack from 13 range with my IOP using some class items. So, nice. yeah. Yeah. So you've went to the eye up and turned it into a cry is what I'm hearing. <laughs> no. <laughs> right, no. Right, 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 right. I see. I see how it is, but we're going to talk badly about cries and how they're one brain cell. Uh, anyway, anyway, I'm not taking it personally. I'm not mad. Oh, You're play, mad. Play, play, <laughs> okay, playing an eye up takes two brain cells, not one. All right. First that, thing. Well, okay, fair enough. That is one more than I use. <laughs> right. And let's finish on this one. You have mentioned in the past that... Uh, Creating content for other games fe felt so good because people rallied around you. And I want to ask you, first of all, has anybody proposed to do anything with you right now? Aside from this podcast that we're doing now? No, not really. Not really, okay. I hope that this becomes a sort of video that perhaps facilitates it. Which brings me to the question. If you were to collab with anyone now, who would you like to get in touch with you at the end of this conversation and be like, Taj, let's do something together. I feel like uh, if we all kind of, I mean, I, I don't really know like any specific content creators that I would like to want to collab with in the English community. I mean, you, Eslix, and uh, some other content creator, maybe would be super nice. We could go with the four of us with different characters and do dreams and different Ooh. characters, each of us, kind of like solo account or something <laughs> like that. that. I think that would be pretty fun. But yeah. Hmm. Do you have any or maybe trying to talk cash by any chance? No, I, I mean, I have my main account, but I don't really have any characters level up. I will take note of that, actually. Because I think it would be super so fun much. to do either different dungeons or just dreams or something where we're all playing just one character. And in different accounts, of course, each of us, the four of us at the same time. That would be pretty fun. One account, four content creators doing hard stuff and see how difficult it is to get out of your comfort zone of just playing four accounts at the same time. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> wow, I love that idea. And you know what? I might hit you up for that one because I definitely am up for it. Right, we have two things left. We want you to tell us the most Im one of the most important components of your life and inclinations in general that we haven't covered pretty much extensively. And then after that, I would like you to take 
the stand, this, the the scene is all yours. I want you to look directly at the camera and tell us what you have going on in life. What is your plan for the future? What are you working on? Get us excited about the future. What are we looking forward to? And especially if you can put an emphasis on the second plan, which is how can we help you? What do you like coming from the community? Would you like us to do more collabs? Would you like people to just give you likes? Do you prefer comments? Would you like someone, as Jay said, to send you $12,000 a month? <laughs> what is it that you consider support <laughs> that you'd love coming from the community? So, uh, well, basically, something I mentioned earlier is that I'm a fairy, I have a persona and all that. And one of the things about my persona is that she's an, an Eastern Dragon kind of base. Not really an Eastern Dragon, because Eastern Dragons have like a more furry and are more fluffy and all that. But she's kind of like more scaly. And the reason I designed her the way that she's designed is because she kind of um, is a projection of like me, Ariel. Uh, a lot of the, the designs that I have in clothing and colors, choices of uh, color palettes and all that are like either gold for, um, for jewelry or crimson is like a very prominent color. Uh, the clothes are very dark and very goth looking and it's kind of like my personality just put into like a character and i think mm -hmm. that's very cool to just have there and a lot of the fairy communities kind of like that where you have like your own personality just put into like a different character mm -hmm. and me having this as an avatar is super nice for like doing content creation because i can um yeah because i can just have this like being shown um and it's a pretty big facet of my life because a lot of my like social links and the events that I go to and all of that stuff is like uh, very, very themed. So in February, I went to like a fairy convention and that was pretty fun. It was like, the first one I ever went to uh, in real life, even though I've been a fairy for like a really long time because I didn't really have like the income to actually go out of my way to go to there. So you have to was pay for the flight, the hotel, and everything. Chance. It was Sweden, yeah. It was uh, called the Nordic uh, Nordic Foscon. It's a, it probably I think it's the second biggest uh, convention in Europe. Mm. Um, and the next one is gonna be like a uh, Japanese themed. The previous one I went to was Viking themed. So nice. that's like very fun. I actually like, got recognized over there by one person who watched my YouTube channel. No, I was way. sitting there. Yes, I was sitting there wow. having pizza <laughs> with a couple of people that I met at a convention <laughs> from. Uh, <laughs> so. Okay, let me tell you the story. So there's like this okay. event in the convention where we were yeah. going to like different stores in, in Malmo that are like nerd related for like cards and stuff. And I, of course, I went there because I love Magic the Gathering. Oh, so nice. I'm a nerd in that regard. And I was going around some people and some of us went to eat food afterwards. And uh, one of them, after I mentioned that I play Stellaris, I'm like, yeah, I think I recognize you. You make videos on YouTube. I'm like, yeah, I do. But yeah, what's your stuff? I play Stellaris too. And I'm like, oh, shit. Okay. I That's like... The first time I've ever been recognized uh, wow. out of making content creation ever in my life. And well, Big the only one too. Moment. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that was pretty exciting. And talking about my YouTube channel, I have some pretty big updates, or not updates, but some pretty big upcoming things for my YouTube channel regarding Dofus, regarding Stellaris, and also regarding other content that is neither Dofus or Stellaris in my YouTube channel. First of all, Dofus wise, I'm working on this really long video essay in Dofus where I want to express uh, what the game is like from scratch, kind of like the Parasynical or or Bouncy the videos that they make on, on a game. And I want to do it my way, talking about the game, what it is, where it comes from, all of that from like a newer point of view perspective, rather than like having it be um, for someone that has played the game for a really long time, this is for a new player, so they actually get to know the game. And I can talk about it in a very interesting way. So that's upcoming. Another thing that's upcoming is I'm organizing a tournament for Stellaris with um, two other content creators. One of them is Combat Truck, the other one is called Strategizer. And we're uh, gonna host this next week, where I don't know if you know anything about Stellaris, but we're basically doing like a very small galaxy settings and the, the game is gonna be very short, but it's gonna be a game where everyone just tries to go at each other to see who has the most space by the end of the game. And it's going to be very chaotic because of the different rules that we've set in place for that game. It's kind of going to be like Hunger Games. <laughs> oh. So that's so that's super <laughs> exciting. And um, another super exciting thing is that I kind of just returned to YouTube after taking a really long break. So I'm learning how to do a lot of things um, myself, such as like editing the, the slide uh, sections of the videos that used to be done by a different person. I'm doing it myself now. And I'm also starting to stream in... I was starting to learn how to stream a little bit better, so I'm streaming like once a week now, uh, specifically Stellaris. 
and if you've tuned into the new uh, content that I'm making and you like it, um, the best way to support me is to just uh, follow my stuff. That's legit the best way to, uh, to support me. Just getting it known about and following me and all that is super nice to, to have, honestly. I appreciate whenever someone leaves a comment or or something, I, I get so hyped about it. Dopamine rush, notifications, wee! Brain goes, wee! <laughs> I mean, I it's, not just, no, it's, it's not just notifications. Like, mm. it's not just someone giving a like or getting a view. It's someone going out of the way to leave a comment on how they feel about that video and then yeah. reading that. And that's what, like, really, like, at least for me, that's what really excites me. Right. Dodge? Especially, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish real quick. Um, also, if it's a comment that is negative, if they go out of the way to leave like a really long negative comment going over different points of the video being like this could have been done, this could have been done, this could have been done I actually get super hyped that someone paid attention enough to the video to lay out improving points that I could do for my next video yeah, and trying to help me do that that is mm. super valuable and I absolutely love it when someone leaves me a critical comment like that in my video yeah. so yeah we all love yeah, cool. a piece of constructive criticism when you say this is just stupid you're a clown there's nothing that you can take from that as a content creator aside from okay this guy does not like me it hurts a little bit but there's oh you can, can say that <laughs> you can say that but if you put like uh, the long that, criticism please. afterwards no i if you call me a stupid clown and then afterwards you put that long comment criticizing me yeah that's fine by me you know that's okay i can that's actually criticism. you've done this i didn't like this for that reason this is what would have been better in this situation this is actionable feedback that i can go and change in the future or change that piece of content as well we like that we don't like unconstructive constructive yes we like <laughs> yes <laughs> anything else for us charge no nothing it's been a pleasure being here honestly i loved speaking with supporting you. smaller was... content creators yeah yeah yep it was fantastic thank you very much for passing <laughs> by um i had one last question for you will we see you at the Ankama convention this August. No, unfortunately not. Oh, sad. I am sad. We would have loved to see you there, but perhaps we can see you in real life one day in some sort of Ankama event or a sort For of sure, gathering 100%. in Europe, hopefully. Yeah, we have a question from Flammable, who is a big Stellaris fan by the looks of it. Favorite starting origin in Stellaris. Come on, do him the pleasure uh of just the two of you will doomsday. understand this but yes much deserved yeah doomsday so basically i'll explain real quick so doomsday is his origin that when you start you start at one planet and after 30 years in game your planet explodes and you lose everything and that's my favorite origin in stellaris superb because you're playing with fire <laughs> <laughs> terrible uh terrific game mode with time embedded in it love it Thank you very much, Taj, for being here. I appreciate you accepting the invitation to come and speak with us. I, for one, feel like I know you a lot better now. And we'll keep a keen eye starting from next week for any sort of avenues of collab. So please, if you do have any idea, regardless of how crazy or ambitious it is, please do hit me up. Uh, I've taken note of the one that you've mentioned earlier, and I will be looking forward to doing more things uh, with various content creators, but definitely you because you've brought a new type of energy that is deep into the internet. Your knowledge of memes, of uh, uh, internet humor combined and coupled with your incredible knowledge of video editing and stuff like that, definitely are a recipe that yield to success. The rising tide will lift everyone up and I'm definitely one to want to be associated with that. So anything you think of, please hit me up. I'm more than available for your craziest ideas. Thank you very much for passing by. Uh, yeah, it's been I a pleasure. It's, uh, I really like being here and uh, I hope to actually collab with you in the future. Yeah. Fab. Thank you so much.